So I'm just going to use this and try to pour it evenly over the bed as I can. I'm just going to start on this side. What's up Lazy Dog fam? Hope all y'all are having a wonderful day. It is Wednesday, November 1st here in South Georgia. And on today's video, we need to do a little work in the raised bed garden behind me here. We need to check on our carrots feed those a little bit we'll show you how we do that really easy then we need to harvest some grains and probably feed those as well then we got to figure out what we're going to do with all these perennial onions we've got growing so let's start out with our carrots and i couldn't be happier with how these carrot beds are looking right now right here we have our miami orange carrots now for some reason this bed is not quite as dense as our bed of yellow carrots or our bed of purple carrots i don't know if i just didn't plant these as thick i think we're still going to have plenty of carrots in there it's just going to take a little bit longer to get some complete soil coverage than it will in these two beds over here so yes, these are planted extremely thick, but that's what we want. We won't thin these at all. We want to maximize the number of carrots we can grow in this little round raised bed here. And we also want all the foliage to shade out any weeds once they get up and growing a little bit more until they shade out all the soil. I have been coming in here and having to pluck a few little weeds I see here and there like there's one right there might got a carrot plant in there as well there's a little piece of grass right there so i've just been coming out here every couple days and seeing if i see anything that doesn't look like a carrot plant and plucking it out of there besides that we've just been running this drip every other day keeping these beds nice and moist so now that our carrots have germinated and all those little carrot seedlings are about two or three inches tall, I'm going to start feeding these a little bit. If you recall that video we did about our simplified cool season feeding plans we talked about with root veggies, we want to give them a fertilizer that's got a little bit more phosphorus and potassium than nitrogen to encourage more root development because with carrots, we're really going for the roots. We don't care that much about the tops. Usually those go to the chickens. We we want what's below the soil. So we're going to use some of this AgriThrive fruit and flour which has more potassium than the general purpose formulation and this is really easy to do on a small scale. All you need is a five gallon bucket, preferably a dog's bucket, and then something to pour it onto the bed. So we're just going to pour a few glugs of this fruit and flour into our five gallon bucket here. That should be enough. I don't know how many ounces that is but should be enough and we just need to put some water in here kind of mix it around a little bit all right so we got our concoction made there now if i had me one of those fancy watering cans with a shower spout on them that would work really really well but i don't have one of those so i'm just going to use this and try to pour it evenly over the bed as i can i'm just going to start on this side Turn this way so you can kind of see it a little bit better. And just gonna kind of work back and forth here. We get it over most of the bed. So I did a whole half gallon pitcher on one half of the bed. I think I'll do another on this half of the bed. So we'll do two pitchers per bed. All right, so I gave each bed a couple of these. Still got a little bit left in my bucket here. Probably two or three more of these. I think I'll save that and we'll use that on some greens here in a minute. One thing I am going to do is take my little water nozzle here. I'm just going to give these a splash, try to spread that around a little bit since we were kind of pouring it as opposed to showering it on the plants. I'll give these a good little soak in here and we should be good to go. All right, so those are good to go now. We'll probably do that again in another two to three weeks. That AgriThrive feeds the plants, but it also feeds the soil really well. So it's not like I'm really worried about overdoing it with that stuff. So those are good to go for now. Now let's mosey on to this second row of beds or we've got some groceries to get. So our Savannah mustard here has finally gotten to my acceptable harvest size. Also got a few volunteer zinnias in there as well pluck those out I don't want to eat those just want to eat the mustard tonight so let me get those out of there 
And so what we'll do here is just a clean cut about right there and we'll harvest this entire bed. Now I've told you many reasons why I like this variety. One of the reasons I like it the most is because the leaves stay nice and clean. You'll notice how this grows upright and the leaves are smooth. We're not going to have to wash this three or four times like you will some of the curled mustard. We can just rinse this off, throw it in a pot, and it's good to go. So the prep time on this is a lot less than other mustard varieties. The leaves stay nice and clean, and that's one of the main reasons I like it. So you can get real delicate with this if you wish. I just like to take my knife, grab a bunch with my hand, come along here and cut them. You got to be careful not to pull up those plants. So we we'll just get us a handful at a time. We'll start shoving all these greens into a bag until we get them all cut. All right, so we got those harvested. Got about three and a half bags full there. That may seem like a lot, but these things wilt down a pretty good bit. I can eat one of those bags all by myself. Now, don't worry about cutting these back hard like we just did here. These will grow back several times. So it won't be long, just a few more weeks. They'll look just like they did before we cut them today. And now that we've got those harvested, we can use the rest of our concoction here. Normally, I would use the AgriThrive General Purpose on something like greens, but since we've already mixed this up, it won't hurt to use the fruit and flour on this bed right here. I want to make sure I did it after we harvested the greens because I didn't want my greens tasting a little fishy. So just like we did in the carrot bed, I'm just going to kind of drizzle this along these rows here. Just try to get it as equally portioned as possible. No way to get it perfect like this, but it doesn't really have to be perfect. And just like we did with our carrot bed, I'm gonna give these leaves a little splash. All right, so carrots are done, greens are done. Now let's talk about some of these onions that are just multiplying like crazy and whether we need to move them or not. Now, before we talk about those onions that are multiplying like crazy, let me give you a quick little update on our perennial onion trial we've got going in this bed. So we planted about nine different perennial onion varieties from all over the world, and most of them are doing pretty well. So the only one that croaked is this Florida Finley onion, which is kind of surprising to me since we're only about an hour from the Florida line. You would think that one would do better than any of the others, but it doesn't look like that one's gonna make it. The rest of them look pretty dang good. That white Welsh bunching onion looks good. Red Welsh bunching onion looks good. Heritage white walking onion. Those green mountain potato onions came up really nicely. And we've got those flagpole scallions and I can't read the other labels. But I can if I get on the other side here. So we've got the e-toy multiplying onion. Those have already started to divide. I didn't think this bunching onion of Madagascar was gonna make it, but it looks like it might make it after all. Got one little teeny tiny plant there. And then here we have that Cybo perennial onion. So a lot of those are just kind of hanging in there right now, but these Louisiana evergreen shallots are wide open. So around the end of August, we planted these Louisiana evergreen shallots from bulbs. They took off fast, grew fast. Next thing you know, each plant had multiplied into about seven or eight different plants in a bunch here. So about a month ago, we pulled up each of those big multiplied bunches, split apart those plants, and then replanted them in here even thicker than they already were. Now we had somebody commenting on one of our social media pages saying that theirs looked pretty rough after they split them up and kind of cut the tops on them, trimmed them up a little bit. And mine did too for a couple weeks. But you can see now they look great again. Already starting to multiply again. We've got probably three, maybe four plants there. So these things just keep growing and growing and multiplying. And not only do these things grow and multiply like crazy, they also store pretty well too. So when we were dividing those out, I took a few inside, we used them in the kitchen. I also accidentally left a few in the back of my buggy when I was cleaning out the other day, I found them. So here they are, they've just been sitting in the back of my buggy in the sun or wherever it's been parked over the last month. Tops are still green on those. They still feel like you could eat them. We could eat these or we could plant them. So it's pretty easy to tell that we are quickly running out of room in this bed. This half here is the half that we divided and replanted, and that's about as close as I want to get them. 
still need to divide and replant this side over here we got a little bit more room to work with but once these multiply out again we're going to need to find another home for all these now that's something we probably won't have to worry about until late next summer but something i need to be planning ahead for figuring out where we're going to put these if we decide to move them to the in-ground garden in addition to those louisiana shallots let me show you these potato onions which are soon going to outgrow their bed as well so we planted these potato onions from bulbs a little bit after we planted those Louisiana evergreen shallots, but they are growing so fast. And if you look close here, you can see they've already started to multiply. We've got multiples of three, four, sometimes five in there already. These seem to be a little bit thinner at the base than the Louisiana evergreen shallots, but I believe they grow just as fast. And as you can see, I'm pretty tapped out as far as space goes in this bed. So I don't think I'll be able to divide these out and plant them any thicker in this bed than they're already planted. So I'm kind of in a holding pattern on those. Don't really know what I should do. If I do divide them and replant them, at least some of them are going to have to go in one of our in-ground plots, which is okay because we're about to plant some short day onions right over here as well. We could easily throw in a row of those potato onions. If you've ever grown potato onions, let me know in the comments below what you think I should do. Should I divide them out or just let them hang out there and let them keep growing there until next year? And lastly, while we're out here talking about onions, I feel like we should give these Egyptian walking onions some attention. These are looking really good, not multiplying near as much as Louisiana shallots or the potato onions, but they are multiplying a little bit. You can see we've got two plants right there. And it looks like the bulb we planted right here has multiplied into three plants. So not near as much division going on with the Egyptian walking onions, but that's understandable because those are propagated more by the little bulbs that form on top of the plant that allows them to walk, like the name suggests. So they don't divide at the base near as much as the Louisiana evergreen shallots and the potato onions will. So I hope you enjoyed our time in the raised bed garden today. I hope your fall garden is looking great right now. As always, you can find that AgriThrive fertilizer and the Coop Grow fertilizer we use on our website at lazydogfarm.com. And if you struggle with getting carrots up and going, watch this video right here that we did several weeks ago when we planted our carrots. We'll give you all the tips you need to know to get those pesky carrots to germinate so you get a nice dense bed. So check that out and we'll see you next time right here at Lazy Dog Farm.